Good day, fellow investors. Today we're going to discuss a very interesting company. A company that has no revenue, is losing about 10 million for costs per year on permits for its Donlin Gold project in Alaska. We're talking about Nova Gold Resources that has a market capitalization of 1.3 billion and, as I said, no, no revenues. Now, how can that be? Well, Nova Gold is a call option on gold prices because the Donlin project, if gold prices go up, will be of immense value according to Nova Gold's management. This is the chart that Nova Gold is selling for their mission, business, vision, whatever. So if gold prices hit 2,500, the net present value of their project, not even the net present value, the net present value at 0% discount rate is 27 billion. So the total cumulative cash flows. At 5%, that net present value falls to 11 billion of the project. Okay, 11 billion, you say, if gold prices explode, we are now at 1.3 billion, so 10 times upside. No, they own just 50% of that project. The other 50% is owned by Barrick Gold. If we go down to current gold prices, 1,200, then we are at 6.2 billion of present cumulative cash flows and around 500 million for the net present value of 5%. We are in negative territory for the net present value at 8%, which is usual for gold miners. So practically now at current levels of gold, there is no value with the company, there is no value with Donlin Gold project. Now, what to do? Is this something you want to see in your portfolio? Seth Klarman from the Baupost Group owns it. So is that something we should own or not? Let's investigate into the company and see how that fits a risk reward portfolio or simple normal sanity that has to be brought to the mining world. So as I said, no revenues, only costs for permitting, uh, staff, etc. I made a video, don't watch it please, more than a year ago. I was still in the beginnings, but I hope I improved. And I said that Nova Gold is an excellent acquisition for bigger companies. And we have seen recently Newmont acquire their Galore Creek project for 100 million and then another 150 million contingent to developments. So I was right on the acquisition, not the whole company, but they acquired just a project for 100 million now in cash and they will pay 75 or earlier of pre-feasibility pre study, then another 25 million on a feasibility study and then another 75 on approval of construction if ever that happens. This was last year's Nova Gold, Donlin Gold and Galore Creek to good jurisdiction future mines. However, we are still in the permitting process, so we have still one, two, three, four, five permits to get, and those water rights at the end are usually the toughest one, if toughest ones, if I am not wrong. We'll see how that goes, but that's another risk to the story. Another look at the project, it's really huge. The resource is four times the size of the peer group average. So really, really big, big mine with a lot of gold in it. Also, the gold grade is above average, double the world average grade. So again, everything looks really, really nice. They tested it with 1,400 drill holes over 339,000 meters. There is further room for exploration. So resources increased 135% since 2006. So all good there, all looks very, very fine. The mine life 27 years, production 1.5 million ounces per year for the life of mine 1.1 million ounces per year. So that's a tier one production, pot potential production mine. This is again the story depending on gold prices. And now why do I say call on call option on gold prices because if you buy Nova Gold, then if gold prices go up, if, 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 then you can have something that might potentially deliver somewhere in the future. They're developing, the tech. they'll make new technical studies, construction decision, they will see whether it's payable or not. However, the technical report gives you the present value 
with financing on a 100% all equity standalone basis. Does Nova Gold have the cash to develop the mine? It's 50%? No, zero. So either dilution is coming, if the mine, if there is a decision to go, or they will have to incur in a lot of debt. And it takes five, mine, five years for the mine only to be developed. And they need, what, 6 billion in cash flows to do that. That's 3.3 3 billion for Nova Gold, 3.3 billion for Barrick Gold. Where is Nova Gold going to find the 3.3 billion? Dilution, perhaps selling part of the value of the mine to get some money out of it, to get some value like that did with selling Galore Creek. However, let's dig deeper and then you will see, you already feel my negative calculations because this is insanely, how is this valued at 1.3 billion? Let's continue. The technical report from the mine used $1,200 per ounce of gold. Their costs will be 581 per ounce, so a profitable mine in the long term. However, they used the discount rate of 5%. I hate that 8% is a little bit better when we are talking about mines. The internal rate of return at 1,200 1, gold will be 6% and the net present value just 547 million. The cumulative undiscounted after tax cash flow value for the project around $6 billion, payback period 9.2 years. It takes a lot of years to build it and then even more cash flows to build it. So cumulative cash flows until the first year of production, so five years are 6.8 billion, so sorry, 3.4 billion for new gold. Total cumulative cash flows 6 billion at gold 1,200. I made a few calculations just to show well, how does this change in case we change the net present value. Put all the cash flows in the next 27 years plus five of construction, Gold 1,200, the present value at 5%, okay, 563 million, they got 522, okay, we are there. If I put 0.8% discount rate, we are in negative 900 million. If I dare to go to 15 that I usually use with my miners, then we are negative 2.3 billion for gold 1,200. So no way they make a decision on building this. Barrick will never do that. Back to the sensitivity. Again, if gold prices hit 2000, then the net present value, 2000, we are talking 2000 here, the net present value of the project is 6.7 billion. 6.7 million divided by two is 3.3 billion. So the upside, if gold prices hit 2000, the upside is from 1.3 billion to 3.3 billion. So that's what, 200% without the financing. So add the financing, add the dilution. So perhaps from 3.3 billion plus the usual 30% discount on such a project that will have a lot of issues, five years of building, then grades, then whatever. So when you sum all those things up, I think that even in case of gold 2000, that the value or the net present value, if I put it, push it to 8%, comes below 2 billion for Nova Gold's stake in the mine. So below 2 billion and I have now 1.3 billion in market cap. So the upside in case of gold going to 2000 is what 50% in an extremely positive scenario. I have put it here gold at 800 Nova Gold zero value gold now it's at four dollars per share gold at 2000 it goes my maybe five six dollars per share because of the current crazy valuation so no cash flows all in sustaining costs okay 600 but still crazy 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 on top of it they have also debt about 90 million in long-term liabilities so they will need more money to finance what they're doing if the production just to finance the survival ship over the next few years if the production doesn't get traction the Paupos group has 4.2 percent they increased it from three percent don't know what you're doing set there you can give me a call and explain that to me to be frank here my value for nova gold's stake in donlin 100 million max so downside for nova gold 90 percent when 
common sense hits those that own the company. That's it. Now, another point is, if Novagold's stake is valued 1.3 billion, then Barrick's stake should also be valued 1.3 billion. If I check Barrick's market cap, it's 13 billion. So is Don Lin 10% of Barrick's capital? No. Plus, Barrick has the capital, Barrick could find the 3 billion to build it. So it should be even double the market cap. So is Donlin 20% of Barrick for a fair valuation? Of course not. When I type Barrick in the big presentation slide that they had at their investor day with 128 slides, Donlin Gold comes only out seven times and just once mentioned on a great slide with, okay, this is what can happen in the future. We have these resources. So think of it from a Barrick perspective. What do investors, what do analysts give it a value when they look at Barrick? I don't think they even account for it as it's just resources somewhere in the future at extremely high cost. So similarly, perhaps they add 100 million to it. Similarly, Nova Gold should be valued at 100 million, which implies 93% downside from here. This is my simple common sense. Please let me know if I'm wrong, where am I wrong? Because I really would like to know. Thank you for watching, looking forward to your comments and I'll see you in the next video.